six sixteen hundred dollars at four four o'clock. So the meeting is now called to order. Let the secretary receive read the report. And I believe the the the, the date, uh, sir, is the eleventh. Is it not? Eleventh. Okay. Yes, sir. August the eleventh. Okay. All right. August eleventh. Money, you want to call roll? Yes. Mama Stevens? Here. Sheriff Smoot Johnson? Sheriff Smoot Johnson? Hi, Tom. Hey, how are you? Is Ms. Cook on? I am, I'm sorry, present. Mm -hmm. okay. Is Ms. Johnson on? Ms. Johnson's on the screen. I believe she, her microphone's muted. Oh, okay. It She's is. Okay. And Mr. E.W. Phillips. Here. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let the rep reflect that we have a quorum then, huh? And with the, the, okay, go ahead. We do have a quorum. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first agenda that will be on the order is uh, since uh, item two has been uh, removed, the next item that we will have is Global Management Group Incorporation. And they are requesting a variant for ordinance section eight point four walls and fences to erect a gas six feet galvanized security forces. Uh, <clears throat> now, do we have anybody from the global management group? Yes, we do. Time? Yes, we do, sir. Okay. Well, at this time, I will ask the uh, whoever is the spokesman for the global management group come before us and give us your uh, our respective uh, uh, description of what you want to do and requesting for your variance from the ordinance of section eight seven and the walls and the fences to erect at the uh, six feet galvanized security fence. If you would do that at this time. All right, uh, I'll do that. Uh, we are requesting a variance to install a six foot fence around our property. Uh, that would be lots 10, 11, and 12 uh, at 508 uh, 24th Street North in Bessema. And that is because we want to use that a lot to install, uh, I mean, to, uh, to store equipment and materials. Okay. What kind of, what kind of equipment do you... Uh... We would like to, uh, to store a bobcat, uh, trailers, trucks. And so we want to put that equipment there. And, and for security reasons, we need that, uh, to uh, ensure that nobody just walks onto our yard and, you know, uh, takes off with the equipment or, you know, with, you know, just interferes with what we would have over there. Okay. Uh, now we've uh, heard from the uh, the representative for the Global Management Group and Cooperation. Uh, does anybody have any comments that they would like to make at this time, uh, board members? Mr. Phillips. Yeah, this is Tom Harmon of the building department. Uh, uh -huh. Not a not a board member, 
But since we have advertised for public notice for this variance, we have had no complaints. We've had no comments from any of the citizens. Uh, no one has been in opposition. And this property is zoned I-1 light industrial. So it is a proper fit for the dump truck Bobcat and equipment laid on yard that she is proposing. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that information, Tom. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Excuse me. Excuse me. That's not true. Uh, we got petition in the citizens that lives on 8th Avenue, 9th Avenue, and around this property. Uh, we said we're trying to clean up that side of the bridge. We understand that Bethlehem may not want uh, to clean up that side, but as citizens, we're trying to clean up that side. And no, we don't want another junkyard. We don't want another store in place. Uh, we don't want no feet and no fence built up to store things. We're trying to build our community back. We just got a lot of the houses torn down in that community. And we're trying to do something good on that side of the bridge. Uh, they can store this somewhere else. Uh, they can build a fence somewhere else. But, you know, we're trying to make our community uh, much better. We Would you identify yourself, please? Uh, yes, I'm so sorry. This is State Representative Louise Alexander. I got property over there. I live over there. Mr. Cindy Austin, there are all the businesses around there. There, even the church across the street from it. Everybody's saying we don't want this I store in our community. We just y'all just tore down houses over there. Y'all been cleaned up. Y'all got the grass and stuff looking good. This is something we're trying. This is where we live at. You know, yes. y'all. We already got Mr. Willow, and we already got the other ones going down the middle of Eighth Avenue. But we just started tearing down houses and stuff on that side. And we're trying to build back up on that side. We're trying to do something where our kids can run around in our neighborhood, walk in our neighborhood without seeing a junkyard here, a storage yard here, and all this stuff. So that's not true. That That, that is not true. And it was zoned for a cleaner uh, that was a cleaner that was torn down there in a uh, food place that was uh, uh, torn down there. When Miss Pippin was in, I guess they did a, uh, a blanket to say industrial or whatever, whatever could be over there. But yet and still, they still have to come before the city council and the zoning board. And, and, and they should look at the citizens that live there. We're trying to reconstruct our houses, read, uh, do our buildings and all that stuff. We're trying to make that side of Ninth Avenue look better. Yes, ma'am. Uh, again, Tom Harmon, building department, city of Bessemer. Uh, apologize, retract my previous statement. None of this information was brought to the building department. I've not heard from anyone or spoken to anyone or sent any petition. Uh, I, didn't well, have sp I spoke out of turn and I didn't realize there was opposition to this. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I do apologize because we had to call down here today because they said it was going to be at the city hall. So when we called, the city hall said that it was going to be on Zoom and that we could call in. So they asked me to be the sports person for them. And I could bring, I will bring you the petition down there uh, so you can see it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. Uh, without those petitions being uh, available at the time, uh, do you think we need to table this to a the next month? I would appreciate it. Um, can I ask a question? This is uh, Ms. say call for a member. Is the property already used for commercial use already? That's the question I want to ask. I wasn't sure when I was looking at it. Tom, is it already commercial use for the property now? It right. was for a it was for a uh, dry cleaners. It was a cleaner okay. there in a uh, uh, hamburger place that was there. Uh, put the store materials and do a fence. You know, uh, you got a church right there. You got homes right there. And you got uh, two homes right there on the side of it that's trying to build back up. You got two homes on the other. But on that side of the bridge, we, I mean, if you come over there, you'll see it's just started to be cleaned up and uh, trying to renovate and trying to clean up that area on, on that side of the bridge. From 22nd all the way down to uh, 31st, the bridge and on 9th Avenue. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank y'all. Mm -hmm. uh Anybody else got any comment? Yes, sir, Mr. Phillips, it's Ron Gilbert. Whatever the board decides on this, I just wanted to bring it to their attention 
that if uh, if a fence is approved for a variance, uh, I would suggest that the terminology be put in there to where if the fence obstructed sight distance in any way, it would have to be moved not to obstruct any sight distance um, for the traveling public. That's important. Okay. Mr. Phillips, this is Shan. Um, just so so Representative Alexander will know or anyone else, any member of the public, what we're trying to do during this COVID thing, in addition to Zoom, we have uh, Mr. Harmon in City Hall and there is a laptop computer on the podium. So you can come to City Hall, anyone can come to City Hall and speak as if, as if the board was having a meeting in public there. So they could come there okay. and express their opinion at the podium. Okay. Okay. I do, I do yeah. appreciate that, um, Mr. Chan. Uh, but it was not noted on the letter that they sent out that you could do that. So I do sure. appreciate that information. I will pass it on. Yes. You know, it's uh, it's, it's different circumstances. We're all trying. It's all new to all of us trying to get through this. So. Yes, Lord. That's right. Is there anyone else that's uh, on Zoom that would like to make a comment at this time? If not, is there anyone else that is uh, against this request for the fence? If not, we will, uh, I think that it should be uh, table until the next meeting because that there was not a sufficient information from the public available to us. I second that. Okay. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. I should have called Mona, aye. This is Tom. This is Tom again. Can can I who seconded yeah. the motion, please, for the minutes? Mona. Thank you. We got all. No. Is she going to call the roll? Call the roll, Mr. Phillips? Call the roll, yes. Yes. Vonda? Are you muted? Call the roll. Hello? Yeah. Wanda is having technical difficulties. She's calling the roll right now, but nobody can hear. Okay. Um, Mona Stevens. Aye. E.W. Phillips. Aye. Cher Smooth Johnson. Andrea Kirk Cook. Aye. Miss Alfeda Acoff. Aye. Ms. Phillips, I believe you have your unanimous. Okay. We got a unanimous to vote to uh, table this until the next meeting. Okay, now let us move to the next item. Four, who is Eddie E. Cooper, requesting permission to use the facility to hold church service, which is uh, permitted use on review in the R3 zoning. Um, do we have anybody here that uh, is uh, representing Eddie Cooper? Mr. Phillips? Yes. And this is Tom again, the building department. We have not had contact with Mr. Cooper since the last meeting when this was postponed due to lack of information. He was notified of this meeting. Okay. I noticed that, yeah, he'd been on the on the agenda for the meeting for at least three times. Yes, sir. 
So uh, I got a list of uh, of people here that objects to his uh, uh, requesting permission to use the facility to hold a church service, which is in a permitted use on review of the R3 zoning. And I got a, about three pages of list here, I think. Yes, sir, you're correct. And if I'm not mistaken, we have some citizens actually here at City Hall to speak on this. Right, okay. If there's any, um, and there's nobody to represent Mr. The Cooper present. To my knowledge, let me let me check and make sure one of these people are here. Stand by, please. Okay. Good afternoon, y'all. Uh, I'm assuming we're here for the uh, Fifth Avenue case. Would you like to speak for it? Okay. All right. Well, we would identify yourself by name. Yeah. No, but you could be here if you're not. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Uh, we have a young lady here who would like to speak uh, in opposition to this variance for number four, um, okay. 31 35th okay. Avenue. Mr. Phillips, right. I ask a question. Mr. Yes. Phillips, and Tom, I ask a question. This is Alfie Dacoff. Clarification from an attorney. Can we proceed without the person being here? That's uh, all. Right. application. Uh, yes, can we you, you can. You can proceed. We can yeah. proceed. Yes, he was noticed to be there. Uh, we, yeah. we told him at the last meeting that it would be held over for this meeting also. So certainly you can proceed to hear the matter. Okay, just want to get it for the record, Mr. Phillips. Yeah. Sorry, just make right. sure. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Okay, in opposition, would you go ahead and speak? Yes, my name is Patricia Johnson. I live at 3126 Fifth Avenue, right next door to the building that he's Something. I don't know what it is, but he's come down several times trying to make it a dead center, and now he's saying a church. He did for a church to make it whatever. Excuse me, he wants to, but I am one along with many others. I'm only speaking for myself. That's in opposition because we live in that neighborhood, and that's what's wrong with the world today because we we allow things to come in our neighborhood that we don't want in our neighborhood, and that is something we don't want in our neighborhood as citizens and neighbors, we've always stuck together and did things the way we want to do it. And Mr. Cooper come out from nowhere and want to put his business in our community. Put it in his. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to represent opposition or speak on opposition of the, the topic? Just start talking. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Hi, how you doing? I was All here right. last month when you had the meeting. I was the only person from my neighborhood here, and I'm still on that same ground. I know that you told us that, uh, well, someone told us that if they did it, if he made it into a church, you wouldn't let him change from being a church only. I appreciate that. But uh, with that being right, it's just something you're just telling him. Okay, and your name? Oh, my name is Tawana Knox. Okay. And your, and your address, ma'am? 3226, 6th Avenue North, no. Bethlehem. My mom stayed right behind it at 3127. And she's like eight, and she, but she just turned 79 years old on the third. Okay. And you in opposition? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Is anyone else? Yes, sir, Mr. Yes, sir, Mr. Phillips. This is Tom. We have another citizen coming to the podium. Okay. Yes, I'm Arzella Watkins. I live at 3029 6th Avenue North, and I'm against this. 3029 6th Avenue North. Okay. Angela Watkins. My husband is Reverend Watkins. He's here with me. 
And you're in opposition? That's right. Okay, thank you. And I have another neighbor here, Miss Melanie Mars. Hello, my name is Melanie Dotson Morris. My mother lived at 3101 6th Avenue North, and I, I'm representing her uh, part of the property that uh, I'm just concerned that Mr. Cooper has changed four different times what he wants to do with that property. And that seems quite unusual, you know, that you start off with something and each time you change. So my thing about it is that I'm concerned that if we give him the permission to use the property, that later on he'll change to something that he really was intending to do in the first place. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there any, is there anyone else? Mr. Phillips. Yes. This is Tom. There are no other citizens present and I'm, I'm not aware of anyone waiting on Zoom. This is Eddie Cooper. I'm on the line. Okay. Is that Eddie Cooper on the line? This is Eddie yes. Cooper speaking, yes. Okay, sir. Would you go ahead and speak? This is Eddie Cooper speaking. I have a, a request for 3135th Avenue North, Dustin, Alabama, for to be used as a church. Okay. What else uh, would you explain to the audience that is listening what you would like to do? This I'm trying to understand that question, what I would like to do. We would like to use this building to have church services, regular church services in. As a congregation. Okay. Um, how, many, how many people are you expecting? Uh, what size of the church you plan to? Do you have any of those plans, anything? A number of people? Right now, there's approximately 15 to 20 people. Okay, 15 to 20 people. Yes, sir. Who, who am I speaking to? Are uh, you speaking to uh, E.W. Phillips? I'm the chair of the board for today. Okay, Mr. Phillips. Just want to know who I'm speaking to. Okay. Oh, uh, yes, sir. I just you came in you came in a little late. Uh, yeah, I, I know. We're having problems getting on the line. Okay, that's why we align you the opportunity right now to speak because we was in the uh, in the phase of uh, addressing the um, the people that the concerned neighbors of the property that listed at that the address at 3130 Fifth Avenue now. Okay. And we've, well, had, we, we've uh, well, well, I, I was just under the impression that everybody was aware of this, this property. So that's why I didn't go into great detail because we've, we've been here at this issue several times and I just thought everybody that's on the board was uh, aware or up to date as to what was going on. The last time we uh, presented some items and some things concerning this property, and uh, there was no decision made on it. It was put on hold for today. So I didn't know whether the board had time to look at it, discuss it, and make a decision, or, or what was the, the process. So I'm, I'm back here today making the same request. Uh, 
Uh, what what facility are you going to use to hold a church hymn to, uh, for these 15 to 20 peoples? What facility? Yes, yes you what facility? At the... Yes, you got a uh, permission to use this facility, the facility to hold church service, which is permitted use on review. What building are you using? I'm trying to understand what, what building am I using right now? Uh, you want to rezone uh, what, what, the property or what do what you what, what you doing? You were rezoning it. Yeah. Permitted to use the building in R3 zoning. You don't have one yet, do you? Do you have a building? No, I'm, I'm only requesting this building, if I'm understanding your question correct, this building at 3130. 3130. Mm hmm Okay. What is the building now, the current use of the building at the present time? The building is the, is the old local 531 building, which used to be owned by Fairfield Steel, which is right across from the Harvest and Walker plant, which they used to use as their headquarters. It's on the corner of Fifth Avenue and 32nd Street. Okay. And you want the to building use it? Has, you want to use it as a church? That's what you're requesting to use as a church. Yes, sir. Well, have you gotten a number of people here that in opposition of you using that building? Okay. Uh, you got probably 20 or 25 people that's in opposition. More, more than you got that is, the, you know, it's, that you got 15 to 20 people as a, uh, as a member. So you got more in opposition. And you got a number of them that's right now currently present at the, uh, at the board. That objects to you using this uh, as a church. Okay, in the in the R three zoning, as you stated, is one of the permitted uses a church. Yes, you have. Hello. Yes, you have. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. You justify uh, your church, and you said fifteen to twenty people. Uh, the church is going to build, will it have any accommodation for the people that live in that vicinity? What, what do you mean would the church have accommodations for the people? I don't, for the people that live there. Explain what you're, you're saying. Uh, you have to explain yeah. this. You, you, you need to explain this to your opposition. You, we've... Uh, We've gotten a number of people uh, opposition that spoke in, in opposition to you today because you were late coming in online. Well, I've, I've, I've been to every meeting, never missed a meeting, never been late. And I've had to wait 30 minutes or more every time I've come to a zoning board meeting or a Zoom meeting. So I apologize for being late. But okay. those things happen. Well, I'm on uh, ask the board members, uh, do they have any comments? And after that, we will make a vote. Any board members like to have a comment at this time?
Uh, Mr. Cooper, this is Alfred Acoff on the board. Um, my this concern is Joe Acoff, Alfred Acoff. Um, okay. My question is, I know you've come before several times. Is it more concerned that the building is commercial, has been zoned curved? Is your concern more of it's a commercial? Uh, I know you said it has been, uh, the water board has put it as uh, commercial and other things could view it as a commercial building. But from my understanding, the community is seeing it as a, a more, uh, what, because you come several times, it gives the impression that you just want to put some type of commercial uh, thing in there in their community. Is that what it is? Or just because you have the building, you want to put a commercial thing? Or do you want it to be a residential building? What what real issue with the building with you? Well, Ms. Ms. Acoff, I've never requested anything residential because this, this building was purchased as a commercial building. That's the way it was listed. Every document that I have, and you know, uh, if you was on the line the last time, uh, Shane Tate was on the line, and I made a request if the zoning, now we're going back to the original zoning, if the zoning has been changed, and I was told that perhaps Bessma had an ordinance or a revolution or something to show where the building has been changed. But in the past, this building, I'm, I'm quite sure everybody's aware that this building has always been a, and like I said last time, this building, as far back as the computer would let us go back, has always been commercial, it's on commercial. And the city of Bessemer have given several licenses to operate in this building. And, you know, we, I have some of the paperwork and stuff that was left in the building when it was a tax place and the former revenue they had that was a club and all these other things. And so the last time we was on the Zoom call, I asked if this, according to the property tax and according to the Bessemer Utilities and Allegaster, everybody who's charging me commercial rates, if it's, and then even as far back as we could go, when Fairfield still owned this property, it's always been commercial. Uh, I'm asking that the city of Bessemer give me something, and uh, Mr. Harmon was there, and hope he's on the line today, and Shane Tate, and uh, Mr. Hodge, and everybody else that was on the line last time, thought that there might be a ordinance showing where Bessemer changed the zoning on this building to residential. So I have requested that information uh, last month. If there is something to show that it was actually changed from this since Fairfield Steel had it, since Local 531 had it, I'd like to get a copy of that. Uh, Mr. Cooper, this is Tom Horman, Building Department. Yes, sir. Uh, on the contrary, the property is now and according to Bester's records, always been zoned R3. I reached out to the okay. city clerk and she can find no evidence that the property was ever zoned anything other than residential R3. She has, the city of Bessemer has no evidence the property was ever commercial. Okay, so let me ask you a question, Mr. Harmon, since you're on the line. When these other businesses were in this building, they had to come, and the people that told me they had to come to Bessemer to get a business license. So how were they permitted to use this building as a business if it was not commercial? Did they get a, did they get a variance? I have been at the city for roughly 10 years. The, this building's been vacant to the best of my knowledge in the, at that time. Um, who's, who's speaking? I'm sorry, this is Tom. Uh, not disputing okay. your word at all, but if there were businesses there, they probably did exactly what you're trying to do today. Tried got a variance of permission from this body to do that. And yes, they would have had to have a business license. Okay, Mr. Harmon. Yes. I have submitted to you all the paperwork I have concerning this business and this building. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know we were going to re we were going to revisit this issue today, whether it's commercial or not. But since we are here. 
can you uh, give me some documentation to that fact showing that it has always been residential? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll be happy to. And to be quite honest with you, you seem rather concerned about the zoning of commercial residential. And I understand you own the property and we'd like to confirm that. But if you look in our zoning ordinance, uh, a church is not a permitted use on review in a commercial zoning either. So regardless if this property is zoned residential, commercial, industrial, institutional, whatever, you would still have to come before this body and get a permitted use on review to put a church there. Okay. Well, Mr. Holland, according to the letter that you wrote to me, it says that a church is permitted on this property, according to your letter. Absolutely. Yes, sir. I stand by my letter. I believe it says the church, okay. is, a per the church is a permitted use upon review. That's exactly what this body is doing. This is your review to see if a church can be there or not. Okay. Well, just give me a copy of what you have, and uh, if we can, we can move on with uh, what's taking place today. And uh, I'd like to ask Ms. Acoff if, if I have addressed the issue that she asked earlier. Uh, you have, and my, my thing is, uh, just because um, one thing I think I'm understanding from the, building, uh, from the zoning codes, just because it was zoned at one time commercial by one business, that variance dies with that person. I, it don't carry on to the next. In my understanding, Mr. Harmon, I think if it was, uh, they did have a variance at one time, it don't necessarily go to the next person for variance and next person for variance. You got each each time a new owner comes or whatever happens, that variance only stay with their owners. That's my understanding. Yes, ma'am. Your zoning is exactly correct. I would happily defer to Shan on this for, for clarification, yeah. but if you're granted a variance for a certain piece of property for a certain use, then that applies to that use and to you as long as you own that property. Uh, if I buy the property from you, I do not have the same privilege. Uh, the, the variance dies with you, for lack of a better term. Um, now, if a property were actually rezoned by the city, then that, that zoning holds until, until the cows come home or until it's rezoned again. But yes, ma'am, you are correct. The variance is for a special use for a person, and it's it is yours and yours alone. Yeah, um, and that um, because of the use of uh, uh, other variance in the past, it might necessarily can be used, continue to be used for that that use that variance over and over again. Uh, that's what I'm trying to make clear. So okay, mm -hmm. I I understand that 100 percent, Ms. Acoff, and I, I agree with that. I, I understand that. I, I see that point very clearly. My 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 question was though, if it's still listed as commercial, well, I I tell you, let's 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 just move on to 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 whatever we need to do today. Uh, I presented all the paperwork I had that showed it to be commercial, and the city of Bessemer Water and Utility is still charging me as commercial would not allow me to turn the water on until I paid the commercial rates. So we'll just move on from that issue. We'll just move on from the issue because it appears that we're going to go backwards and full forward. And I have all my paperwork stating one thing. And uh, as of now, I don't have anything from Bessemer stating anything any different. And I requested that. If you had that, let me have it. I, and I requested that last month and even before last month. Mr. Cooper. Okay. Yes, yes sir. Who's this, speaking? This is Tom Harmon speaking. You will have the city okay. of Bessemer's zoning maps reflecting on R3 residential zoning tomorrow. If you would like to carry it to the utilities or to Bessemer Water and continue your dispute with them, feel free. But you, you will have the city no. of Bessemer's documentation tomorrow. I, I know, sir, Mr. Harmon. I'm not going to no longer dispute with anybody in Bessemer about this. I would like to get the documentation because I've, I've constantly asked for it. And if you can get it to me tomorrow, I, I appreciate it. Okay. At at this time, do uh, we have anything from the uh, attorney? No, sir. I think Tom has done an excellent job of setting it up. The property is, according to our records, zoned R3. Um, a church is a use permitted on review, but that is up to the board to decide whether that use would be consistent with this zoning ordinance. And I think that's right. 
where we are and what Tom has said. Okay, at this time, uh, based on the oppositions that we've uh, had and the number of uh, names on the signatures here against this uh, approval, at this time, uh, we will go to the, any board members have any comments? If we have no comments, then we will uh, have the secretary to call the roll for a vote. Um, I don't, I think first you need a motion and a second to either uh, advance okay. to either, okay. either to allow it or not allow it. Absolutely right. Vote this time. I think we need someone to entertain a motion to call a motion, a motion. First, in a second. So we need a, a motion to either motion. Uh, deny or admit one of the. Uh, okay, at this time we call for a motion. You have to say if it's a deny or admit. Deny or admit. Um, uh, Mona, you would either need to, a motion to grant the request grant, uh, or a motion to deny the request. Deny. Was... Mr. Phyllis, just to say, cough. It's a motion to cost the public uh, opposal to the uh, the property being used as a church. I would like to deny it at this time. I second that. Most... Mona Stevens. Okay, we've had a motion to deny uh, this property this time. Now let's have a roll call. Tom, you might have to do that since yeah. we seem to um, hear um, Fonda. Yeah, she's uh, she, okay. she was calling the roll, but it wasn't coming through. Uh, Mona Stevens? Aye. E.W. Phillips? Aye. Ms. Sher Smoot Johnson. Ms. Johnson, I believe your microphone's muted. I can see your mouth moving, I can't hear a word. Hi, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Andrea Kirk Cook. Aye. Uh, Ms. Alfredo Eckhoff. Aye. Mr. Phillips, I believe you have unanimous. Unanimous. Sorry. Okay. Now we've had a unanimous uh, uh, disapproval on this, so this motion has been denied. And let the record reflect, we have no other items on the agenda for today. So I move that this board be, be dismissed. Adjourn. Adjourn. Um, I like, can I get that in writing, sir? Yes, sir, absolutely. You'll have a copy of the minutes. Okay. Thank I'm you. I'm assuming that was Mr. Cooper speaking, correct? That's Mr. Cooper. Okay, yes, yes. You, you have a copy yes, of the minutes. Yes, that was Mr. Cooper, yes. All right, y'all have a good day. Thank you all, all right. for participating. Thank y'all. Bye. Yeah, Thank you. Bye. Bye now. Yeah. Woo. Oh, so with me.